All right, so today we're talking about color contrast. And this is a new CSS feature, a new CSS method that we can use in our CSS to make our websites more accessible and to add a little bit of flexibility. Now, this feature is actually something that I rarely say is available first and only in Safari, and it's actually a very useful feature. So other website, other uh, browsers rather, they're working on it. So hopefully by the end of this year, we're gonna be able to use this across the board, but very cool, very useful feature. So I have basic, simple little CSS. I've got a little tiny bit of script. All it's doing is toggling a CSS class name. There's a class name called hi that I'm going to add and remove from the body element. So as I click on this, I'm changing the text here and I'm adding and removing the class name body. So that's all we need to worry about here. That's all that's happening here. All the work is being done in the CSS. So let's jump into that. So we've got a website. Let's say that our designer has come up with this horrendous color scheme, but we're going to apply it. These are the colors that are available for me for text. These are my background colors that I can use. So I've got this light yellow background in the header. It's got a gr lime green color for the text. Really poor contrast, but that's just more to illustrate this concept. So we've got that. And then in the body, we've got plain background with black text right now. Now we're going to change this. So you can with root. So talking about the root element, pretty much the same thing as the HTML element. It's the root for the entire page. We're defining five different text colors and we've got three different background colors. Now, what we can do is define colors here and then just use those variables, but it doesn't give us a lot of flexibility when it comes to using methods to determine what the background is or change and override the background color. So I've got it set here inside of this, but what I want to do instead is for these two background, I'm going to make the background of the whole body, the rest of the body, other than the header, I'm going to toggle it between these two, depending on whether I'm normal contrast or high contrast. For my high contrast, I'm going to use a really dark black and the other one's more of a, a dark gray. So with those in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here into the body element and I'm going to define a new variable here. So you don't have to define them all up here. I'm going to define it in the body and I'm going to say that the background color, this is going to be my default, basically. This medium gray, that is going to be the background for the body. So in the body tag, when I say I want to use background color, I'm going to target that variable, that CSS property, BG color. So when I save that, refresh to make sure that this is doing updates. So we have this color now being applied to the body. And the reason that I do this is when I click this button, when I add that other class to the body element, I want to change the value. I don't want to use a different variable. I'm going to stick with this variable, but I want to change the value of this variable. So this is going to be reapplied if we change that value. So if the body has the class high, that's what I'm doing with the toggle inside of here. I'm going to redefine the value for this and I'm going to say, no, it's going to be this one. And this is why I don't want to use the two different variable names here. I'm just going to toggle it between the two of them. I'm going to change the value. Now I could use both. I can say instead of hard coding it here, which kind of I lose the benefit of having this available to me. I can point to another variable. We can say, okay, it's going to be BG1 here, but we're going to change it if we add that class to be whatever the value is for BG2. There we go. And it should do the same thing. So not using these variable names when I'm setting the background color, but I do reference them. So I still get some benefit from having them here. Okay, now going to color contrast, the thing that we're really here to talk about. You can see my black text on this gray background. I'm not getting a lot of contrast here, so I do want to change that. What I want to do is I want to use this color contrast method. So the basic syntax is, and I'm just going to write it here as a reference for you. So color contrast inside the method, 
you will put some color. Here, I'll put the notation like this. Looks like the documentation. So this is any valid color value. So it could be hex, a three, six, eight digit hex. It could be a named color. It could be a variable, HSL, RGB, whatever it is. Some color value versus, and this is going to be your background. So based on this color, what is the most contrast out of a list of two or more? So you have to have at least two colors here. If you only have one, there's no point in doing this. So two colors or more. And I'm going to pull out my variables to do this. So I'll do color, color, and so on. And that's the way this method works. This will return one of the colors from this list, whichever one has the most contrast against this one. So for the body text, what I'm going to say is my color is going to be the return value for color contrast between var bg color, whatever that is right now, versus, and then inside of here, we put our list of colors. So I can just say var text one, and it's a comma separated list, two, three, four, five, without the comma at the end. So whichever one of these has the most contrast between BG color versus all these, whichever one has the most contrast, that's the one that's going to happen here. So there we go. This, now it's, I've got it backwards. I put it in the regular body, but I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it into my high contrast area. So body dot high inside of here, there we go. Now when I go to the high contrast, there we have it. So this lemon chiffon has the most contrast out of all of these colors. And we can repeat the same thing, the exact same syntax for the header text. But instead of BG color, it's what did I use for the background color here? It was that one right here, this BG3. That is the background for my header. If we look here, header, background color, BG3. There we are. So when I'm in the high contrast mode, when I've added that class name to the body element, it's going to change like this. Okay, and that's it. So if you want a copy of this code, there's a link to it down in the description. I uh, hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave that in the comments down below. And like I said at the beginning, this is available in Safari only right now. And I'm just happy that Safari has something that is this useful, that is available and out there first. Uh, so hopefully the other browsers will come up with their own implementation of this in the very near future. And it will help you to build more accessible websites. One last note, actually, before I go, something I realized I hadn't shown. Um, to use this currently in Safari, it is still hidden behind a developer flag. So in the Safari menu, if you go into develop and you go to experimental features, you will find it in this list. So it is right here. CSS color contrast. So you have to enable that in this list of experimental features for any of this to work. Hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks for watching.